when you return to Boulder, you will sit down with the Boulder police? Absolutely. Absolutely. We want them to know everything possible. Everything. That can what help them. Whatever they want, whatever anyone wants, we will cooperate. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science. Those of you who know me through the Chris Watts case um, probably don't know that I've written um, more than one trilogy, in fact more than a trilogy of trilogies um, of books on the John Bernay Ramsey case. When I started on the Chris Watts case I felt familiar with Colorado and was intrigued by the fact that Frederick was just up the road from Boulder which I felt I'd gotten to know very very well uh, the lay of the land and also the way that the district attorney's office sort of handled cases um, at the back of my mind I wondered whether the Watts case would be buried just the same way that the John Bernay Ramsey case was buried um, I thought that was a far-fetched thought but it turns out that's exactly what did happen probably for different reasons but not for very different reasons what the Watts family have or had in common with the Ramses just was this picture postcard um, fairy tale appearance of a happy family in a beautiful home in Colorado. But in another way, the, the families couldn't have been too, too um, uh, different. Uh, the one family incredibly wealthy and self made, and the other family incredibly broken um, and dysfunctional financially. In other ways they were similar families just in terms of the um, appearance of health when people weren't necessarily um, that well, especially the children. To be honest, um, earlier this year I had designs on doing something on John Bonet towards the end of the year but then um, my schedule sort of got taken over by the Watts case and also by the Frazee case and of late by the Heidi Brassard um, uh, case which is still unfolding. Um, I'll probably not write a book on that case and I'm probably not going to cover it um, much uh, going forward. But uh, coming back to John Bernay Ramsey, um, I've just noticed that this particular blog post, new, fo new last photo of John Bernay Ramsey, has just been released and there's a problem. Um, it was actually posted quite a long time ago, um, as long as about eight months ago in April. But right now, and for the past couple of weeks, it's been the sort of top story on Crime Rocket. And I... I've sort of let it slip, I haven't really paid attention to it, just thinking it would sort of go away and it just hasn't gone away. And then I've also noticed um, some of my books, um, the Craven Silence series and the Day After Christmas series have just been sort of ticking up, um, kind of encroaching on the sales numbers of Chris Watts and Patrick Frazee and so on and so um, today I actually just went and had a look at some of the numbers and I, I was quite surprised at how many people are reading this particular blog post. And so what I thought I would do is I thought I would just do a blog post um, just dealing with this, sorry not a blog post, a YouTube episode just dealing with this particular post and um, what kind of surprised me, I, I guess I've just forgotten, but I um, when I went through the blog post I didn't actually provide the answer to the question or, or to the um, implication you know I said there's a problem dot 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 but I didn't say exactly what that problem was um, and that kind of put an idea into my head which is still kind of forming um, but before we get to that and before we deal with the last photo um, if you're interested in true crime, especially high profile true crime cases, if you someone who reads true crime, this is the channel for you. Um, please subscribe, ring the bell if you want to receive notifications, uh, like, leave a comment and share amongst your networks. And let's get started.
So to be explicit, the problem that I want to um, highlight directly, clearly, as simply as possible is just to show that this last photo of John Bonet, which was released at the beginning of 2019, so almost a year ago, um, and at the time didn't really make a terrific amount of news. Um, but um, what I want to highlight is a very small little detail in the photo. It's not John Bonet's expression. It's not really even kind of what she's wearing in terms of her clothing. It's the bow that she's got in her hair. Now, the typical photo of that we have of John Bonet that has been known as the last photo is one with her mother Patsy. And we're going to deal with that photo um, in due course. Um, there's something to be said for last photos. Um, there's also a last photo controversy in the Madeleine McCann case which I've written about in detail as well. Um, but what I want to just be explicit about is the bow that you can see in John Bonet's hair in this last photo is the same as the bow that you can see in her hair when she's lying on the carpet when she's... and this was, you know, taken after about one o'clock on uh, the 26th of December. So obviously post-mortem. Now you may think that there's maybe a trick here that um, the patterns on the carpet or um, or John Bonet's hand obscuring the the bow, um, you know, means it's not a very clear image. But um, w you can look at the same image from different angles, and it's clearly the same bow in her hair that that was taken at the whites is um, is in her in still in her hair when she's lying on the carpet. Uh, I can't be certain exactly what the source is of this particular image. It may be from Paula Woodward's book, um, but uh, regardless, this this is a very very clear image of that bow, and um, you can see uh, the carpet as well underneath it. You can see the crime scene ruler and the and the garrote and the hand and uh, so there's it's, it's definitely um, the same bow that you can see in the uh, photo taken at the White's residence. I'm going to deal with the um, last photo in a bit more detail in a moment but before I get to that I want to comment on John Ramsey appearing in the documentary Hunting John Bonet's Killer which appeared I think on A&E um, I was fascinated just seeing him standing in front of kind of a mock-up of the ransom note. You know, it's addressed to him. And um, there are a couple of just obvious things I just want to highlight. You know, someone who's written a couple of books about this case. Um, I just want to highlight um, to you guys. Um, one of them is just the, the part of, um, you know, th the ransom note starts off, Listen carefully. You know, it's not as though um, this is being recorded on camera or it's a phone message. It's a, it's a note. So why must he listen carefully? It's just kind of odd, just that, that, that particular uh, opening. And um, it's something I've highlighted in some of my other narratives. It's just the pageantry around not only Patsy, but the, the whole Ramsey case. Just the whole not just John Bonet in her life, but, but the whole Ramsey case is, is filled with pageantry. Legal pageantry to be sure, but, but pageantry nevertheless. And so, while I was putting together this episode, um, I came across another episode on YouTube from, I think it was 1997, but it was basically dealing with the immediate aftermath of um, what had happened with the, the Ramseys. Uh, I can do a little bit better than that. Um, the source was actually MSNBC's Time and Again, and it was looking at the John Bonet Ramsey murder mystery in a TV special from 1998 featuring Jane Pauley and Roger O'Neill. And often, when you in the time space, you know that is very close to the actual time, um, things appear totally differently. So, what was very interesting about this 
report on MSNBC was they were saying when the Ramses t kind of told the world about this ransom note nobody else knew about it so yes there was a ransom note but it had been kept a secret from everybody um, the police knew about it but they kept it a secret and so how it was actually revealed as, as far as I'm aware it was revealed for the first time on CNN to a worldwide audience by the Ramses themselves so just think about that um, you know the police don't mention this and so the exclusive scoop kind of comes from the Ramses on this particular thing now some people have speculated quite validly in, in my view that this note was written by one or more members of the Ramsey household using stationery from inside the house and written by one or two or with the um, assistance of one or, or more of the some of the the family of John Benet Ramsey inside the home now you can imagine if someone did write it in the home and they meant for this message to be paid attention to they didn't want they didn't pay attention to it but they meant for other people to pay attention to it then the fact that it would be highlighted by them on CNN I think is very interesting that it was not brought to the attention of um, the media or the public through the police but by the Ramses themselves something else I want to highlight that some of you may know uh, those of you who are absolute s scholars of the John Bonet Ramsey case will know this but it might be news to some of you um, the entire ran uh, ransom note uh, has just one fingerprint on it and it belonged to um, I think a, a technician who did uh, analysis on it so so the fingerprint wasn't made by any um, police officer on the scene and it wasn't made by Patsy or John or anybody else and if you think about that alone it's it's kind of crazy is in Patsy's own story you know she stood up and and you know um, with a note in her hand and, and read it and yet she left no fingerprints right um, you may think that you don't leave fingerprints on paper but you do uh, in fact when people take fingerprints when people make fingerprints you put ink on your finger and you you put it down on um, you know like um, on, on paper or cardboard or whatever it is so you absolutely can leave fingerprints on paper and the fact is there, there weren't any fingerprints of of the Ramses um, on this ransom note now you'd think why on earth would you not leave fingerprints on the ransom note if you um, if you were innocent and you picked it up and read it you know wh why wouldn't you do that and also why did nobody um, leave fingerprints on the ransom note um, the police obviously were correct in not handling the ransom note but um, you would expect the Ramses to have left fingerprints on the ransom note and the fact that they didn't is very interesting and very significant and it's something that I often say in true crime the absence of evidence is also evidence something else um, which you could call behavioral analysis or just um, interesting psychology I've always found it very interesting when John Ramsey talks about John Bonet and he's asked, you know, you know, what do you think about her now? And he says he only thinks about John Bonet as that little girl. He doesn't think about her as a grown up. If John Bonet w were alive today, she'd be 28 years old. And um, I think a reason that John Ramsey doesn't think of his daughter um, for the intervening. Um, 18 years that she would have been alive is is um, perhaps because of guilt perhaps because of um, it, to, to think of her when she died and then to to not imagine you know her completing a school career and not going to university in other words not imagining her life um, I think um, I think there's a reason for that I think there's a reason that he doesn't think of her life further it's just 
it ends uh, and and uh, maybe some of that is just suppression su suppressing his thoughts of her um, you know the documentary is called hunting John Bernays killer but you, you never sort of see John Ramsey or or um, his investigators sort of coming out um, well n not in the way one would expect and just saying we've got this file of on this particular person or on this particular suspect and this is like really you know and then him kind of getting involved in himself like making it his mission to find his daughter's killer you know um, where he's you know like the way that a true crime writer for example would investigate a case spending all day um, trying to find out about it traveling to certain locations speaking to certain people one doesn't really get that impression um, maybe it's happening but one doesn't get that impression what's interesting in the Madeleine McCann case is the McCanns on the other hand do seem to imagine Madeleine sort of growing up and having a life but it's almost more bizarre because it's very clear that Madeleine is no longer alive and yet they seem to keep imagining that she is and they're not dumb they're doctors so there's quite a strange um, difference between the, Ma the the McCanns who in a way um, unreasonably seem to imagine that their child is running around somewhere and I don't know whether they've got a room prepared for her and birthday gifts and Christmas gifts or whatever uh, whereas the Ramseys, well, John Ramsey seems to have just, you know, he doesn't think of his daughter um, in in a hypothetical way. And given the pageantry around John Bennett, it's sort of strange that he wouldn't do that. It's strange that he wouldn't think about, you know, who, who could she have become? Um, what may have happened? Just because there have been so many books and stories and documentaries, why wouldn't you think along those lines? You've seen the investigators growing up. You've seen the, um, you know, the whole narrative um, evolve. Wh why wouldn't you be challenged to think in that direction? And so I think within this context, the fact that this last photo was released only now is very um, interesting and also very suspicious. And it also falls into that whole pageantry thing is... How come someone has been sitting on this last photo for, what is it, 23 years? Were the police aware of this last photo? And so this was really the substance of the blog post that I wrote. I want to go through it quickly. Since January, since the lawsuit the Ramses launched against CBS was settled on January 5th, 2019 to be precise, there's definitely been an uptick in Ramsey-related news. So at the same time that the CBS lawsuit is settled, suddenly the news bursts with all sorts of other Ramsey-related rel news. So on January the 9th, Ramsey's defamation go-to guy, Lynn Wood, gives an interview admonishing the fake news media. Then two days after Wood's fake news comments, there was news of an old suspect resuscitating um, his confessions, like Gary Oliver, that started actually as early as January the 11th. So suddenly... Around about around the same time as, as the lawsuit settled, suddenly um, people start confessing to um, what they did to John Benet Ramsey, and these aren't new faces or new names. By February, Gary Oliver's confession was still rolling across the world's media landscape, making waves even in the United Kingdom. By the end of March, Gary Oliver was still the talk of the town. Three months after the CBS settlement. Not a bad run of distracting coverage to drown out the settlement narrative, was it? In April, a documentary featuring none other than John Rams himself came out. Um, it wasn't just a vacuous documentary either. Uh, as I say, 23 years after the unsolved murder, for the first time ever, uh, this photo of John Bernard Ramsey was publicly released. So it wasn't just a documentary. There was something... A small something, but a something of substance in the documentary. There's a serious problem with this image, however. Um, beyond the 23 years that it took to release it, um, there's a serious problem. Before we address what it is, let's have a look at other images that were either previously the last photo of the slain little 
little girl or otherwise photos taken shortly before her death. So those images were previously recognized and accepted as the last photo of John Bonet. It was taken a fair length of time before her death, fairly early on Christmas Day morning. Note the dark ground is still in darkness, so so so, so really quite early. Um, John Bonet was murdered about 18 hours after that particular image was taken, and her body discovered in the basement of the Ramsey home by her father. Another 13 or so hours after that. A derivative impression of the last image was subsequently used as the cover for Paula, Paula Woodward's book We Have Your Daughter, but with Patsy edited out. And so obviously in this image you see John Bonet smiling. And a review in the Daily Camera at the time was pretty frank about where Woodward's true allegiance and objectivity lay. Uh, it, and this is quoting from the Daily Camera, Woodward signals an intention to shoot down erroneous assumptions to repeatedly cast doubt on the prevailing police narrative of the murder. So anyone who suspected the family, um, Woodward would, I guess, shoot down. Um, and, o and obviously in return for that, she was given incredible access to the couple's journals and cooperation from the attorneys and... Um, so, you know, you know in, in, in exchange for this incredible access, there was uh, also um, Woodward um, either taking, well, taking the view that um, she was firmly in the family's corner. Um, other photos taken that morning, Christmas morning, include these, uh, with one of nine-year-old Burke beside his younger sister. If there are few photos of John Bonet on that last day, there are even fewer images of Burke floating around. And uh, that's also been a very strange thing is, you know, most families take a lot of photos of the families of their children, of themselves, on Christmas, especially if you've got young children, if, especially if you've got a six-year-old child and a nine-year-old who are very excited about Christmas. and what we were really given here was basically one photo or two photos very very few photos and um, that's also why it's so suspicious given how few photos were released that 23 years later you have one more photo released at the you know around about the same time of the CBS settlement and does anyone remember what the CBS settlement was about what um, everybody was got so hysterical about. Does anyone remember that? In reality, the last photos taken of John Bonet and the Ramsey home were these, and these are not very easy photos to come by. Uh, you know, after months researching this case, it took a long time to basically uh, find these images. And if technically these are the last images of John Bonet, well, let's not quibble over semantics. What we're talking about is the last image when John Bonet Ramsey was alive. As I've said in this blog post, uh, and as I'm saying here in this episode, there's a serious problem with this, this image. Um, I'm going to put the ball in your court. I'm not going to give you the answer to it. I'm going to let you guys try and uh, answer it. Um, there have been a couple of um, comments on the blog post as well, um, but I'm not going to take it further than that here. What I will do is um, I will um, be bringing out a Kindlet, which is a very short Kindle book, um, close to Christmas time, uh, providing the answer to this and a little bit more uh, background to it. Um, that's obviously in addition to the books that are already out, um, so that will, will be Christmas Star. And um, just for those in interested in the Watts case, the book Two-Faced, The Mysterious Mistress and The Confession has just been published on uh, in paperback, so that's available now. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.